recall the, the magical time. I can't, it's been a lot of years now, but meeting Ariel and Enrico in Brazil um, at a, a really magical conference, uh, so many great discussions. And I can honestly say that that's one of the first times talking to them during the conference that I really started to, to formulate this idea of, of an actual ethnography for autistic people. I felt like I just hadn't had enough opportunity to really get together with other autistic people and, and uh, talk about our experiences and our way of being as culture. Um, and then to see the way that the whole subject is taken off um, with Enrico's work and, and so forth, uh, really inspiring. So in a way, I mean, we can, we can say that Enrico and Ariel, of course, uh, sort of underpinned the ethnography that we have today. Uh, so excited to hear about the new things that he is working on and, um, and Fabrizio as well. Uh, so please take it away. I'll leave it in your capable hands. My name is Enrico Baltellina. I started working on autism uh, something like 20 years ago. Uh, I will uh, talk you briefly about how I ended up uh, discovering uh, ASD and, uh, and uh, how I acted with myself in doing research on ASD. It all started, uh, I graduated in philosophy. It all started when uh, a professor that uh, used to come to the library, I was working part-time. He asked me to collaborate with the university. And uh, so I started collaborating with him and uh, he was uh, a professor of uh, pedagogy speciale special education, a horrible term for uh, people teaching about uh, disability in Italy. There is nothing like, uh, still there is only one professor teaching disability studies in Italy, but uh, the rest of the discourse in university about disability is uh, pedagogy speciale, that is uh, special education. So uh, I started, I can read uh, some languages. So I started working on uh, disability studies. I, I, I was found for uh, the English social model by the fact that uh, I share a lot of uh, common uh, theoretical references with uh, the authors of the social model. Uh, last year, I translated the, the Politics of Disablement, that is one of the fundamental books by, the, by Michael Oliver and the English Social Model of Disability. Uh, and so, while reading a lot of things about disability studies, I ended up in, I think, 2002, in a book by uh, Marian Corker and Sally French, who subtly is uh, Disability Discourse. In this book, there is a text by Judy Singer, who subtly is uh, Why Can't You Be Normal for Once in Your Life from a Problem with No Name to the Emergence of a New Category of Difference. Uh, when, while reading that uh, text, I said, Well, since I was a young boy, Everybody used to tell me to tell me why don't you behave normally and things like that. So I felt interpolated in some way. I it was a kind of cause. So I discovered the email of Judy Singer and I started uh, discovering the marvelous world of what uh, once was called. Uh, uh, Asperger's syndrome, and uh, I started collaborating with the realities that uh, were going on in Italy about uh, Asperger's syndrome. That was the Gruppo Asperger Onlus. Next week, there will be the uh, 20th uh, anniversary of the foundation of the Gruppo Asperger. Uh, and uh, I started uh, translating text, uh, Singer, Silberman, uh, everything that was uh, at the time. 
And uh, so I am a kind of historical memory of the ASD in Italy. Uh, then I kept on uh, reading things, writing papers, uh, translating, uh, and I ended up doing a, a, a doctorate uh, between two towns of the carnival, that is Venice and Rio de Janeiro. And uh, in Rio de Janeiro, I found a marvelous group of research, uh, both Ariel and Down know them by the fact that they are, uh, were at the conference in uh, 2015. And, uh, and after that uh, doctorate, I published, the, I published a lot of other things about disability studies, but uh, this one that uh, has my face on the cover, whose title is uh, Tipi umani particolarmente strani, la sindrome di Asperger come oggetto culturale, that in English sounds something like uh, particularly strange human kinds. Uh, Ariel told me that particularly has a different uh, meaning than in Italian, but uh, particularmente in Italian means both uh, specifically, singularly, singularly but at the same time, uh, with a slightly difference, uh, particularmente strani, particularly strange. Uh, Asperger syndrome as a cultural object that is a kind of Foucault and uh, young hacking uh, research about the uh, history of uh, what they call uh, relational disabilities by the fact that uh, the same thing uh, there was also before 1943 when autism was discovered and uh, is a kind of genealogical research on what was uh, autism before autism and uh, about uh, the contemporary discourse about uh, critical autism studies that is what I'm working now. Uh, that's all. Uh, things in Italy has changed uh, a lot in 20 years. When I started there was uh, just a mailing list uh, for adults uh, of the group Asperger Onlus, that is this association, mainly of parents, but with a lot of uh, autistic people too. There was uh, something uh, more like blogs or things like that. Then uh, everything passed to social networks and uh, now the discourse uh, migrated uh, there. And uh, a lot of things that now are absolutely normal, like uh, activist uh, uh, people uh, doing things to promote the discourses uh, was something that at the time when I started working on uh, relational disability, Asperger, ASD, it wasn't... Uh, there was nothing like that. Uh, so things are changing. Uh, and I think that uh, this fact that things are changing so fast uh, is one of the reasons why for me as a social researcher, as a social scientist, uh, uh, autism is something absolutely interesting. And, uh, and I think that it uh, worth uh, keeping on uh, working on that. Uh, I never uh, searched for a diagnosis by the fact that I come from the social model that comes uh, from uh, a, a critical approach to the medical model. So I said, well, I'm different. I have all this set of not conformities. Uh, I have this boring voice and uh, I do strange things, but I know that I can free myself in uh, this cultural discourse uh, uh, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, in the last uh, years, uh, I think that uh, one important thing to do then I pass uh, uh, to Fabrizio is to put together people uh, working on autism uh, to collaborate uh, and join together to do uh, editorial project like uh, Ariel 
can you please show the almanac? Last year we did uh, this book. Uh, there is a, a Fabrizio is the president of an association that is uh, neuropeculiar and they do every uh, October, they do a meeting, a two days meeting. And we created the, in a few months, this book that uh, I asked people, well, why don't you write about uh, your uh, relation with uh, autism, uh, your personal uh, interpretation of things, and uh, 40 autistic person, not only autistic, there was also Ariel and a couple of others, uh, joined together. And I think that this way of putting people to write on a project, to join together, uh, creates something like uh, a common uh, discourse for people uh, working on uh, critical autism studies or uh, leaving the situation that uh, uh, having autism. Uh, the medical model has a, a common discourse that is that of the DSM. The parents uh, have uh, a common discourse I think that it's time that also autistic people create something like a common discourse in order to share their views uh, without uh, fighting one against the other by the fact that they end up in a narcissistic uh, uh, discourse. That's all. Uh, now I pass. Uh, to Fabrizio, and I will uh, answer your uh, questions. Well, first of all, um, my name is Fabrizio Acanfora. I'm from Naples, Italy, but I live in Barcelona. Uh, I ended up here for, well, uh, life is strange sometimes. Um, my <laughs> Um, I, I have to say that I owe um, a lot to Enrico because, um, well, my 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 story and my with uh, autism is quite recent. Actually, not nine years ago, I um, came across an article, and it was describing uh, somebody. I mean, it's it's not such an original story. I I've read tons of stories like mine, so it's, you know, but uh, I read about somebody who was describing himself uh, as, uh, it was, uh, he was describing himself as an Asperger, and uh, and I was like, oh, it's me, this is me, this is me, this is me, oh, wow, 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 uh, and it was very exciting, and, you know, puzzle coming together, and it was like, oh, this is very strange, so I, started to look for some help what I was you know I I, I wanted to know uh, and uh, a few months later I ended up with a diagnosis yes I, I asked for a diagnosis at the time I didn't know Enrico yet so my uh, idea was really very uh, strong uh, and and then you know it was very how, do you, how can I say um medical so uh i i have to say that my uh, post diagnosis period was kind of a relation uh, as many also say uh, it's not such an original story this too i just want to but um i mean my 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 thing is that i could give a name to many very many things that you know like what really surprised me was though that um, all the people around me, I mean, they didn't have any problems in uh, uh, labeling me as uh, I don't know, like uh, lazy or stupid or uh, uh, antisocial or whatever. I mean, that was not a big deal. But they, the feeling was. I mean, why 
nobody thought, you know, or or, or tried to to see what was behind all those strange behaviors. And um, I mean, just to uh, follow the stereotype of the autistic person, then my interest became autism, uh, and I started you know, I began to study uh, everything I could study about it. Um, and what I discovered was that basically people didn't know that much about autism, in at least in Italy. Um, you know, you, you talked about autism and it was, ah, ah, you cannot be autistic. Uh, you talk, you walk, you smile, you smell too much. Um, you know, so I just thought, okay, let's see, um, I'm going to explain you what autism actually is. And I decided to do that uh, using myself as a, uh, I think it was kind of a political, very, very proto-political way of, <laughs> uh, but I decided to use myself, my story, my um, problems, if we want to call them problems, my difficulties, uh, as a kind of mirror of the DSM uh, or, or the what they call symptoms. So, you know, for each symptom, one uh, episode of my life and then explain it. Uh, and well, it, they publish it uh, and it's uh, still selling. So it's, it's very nice. I mean, the, the very nice thing about the book is that uh, I still receive messages from people who repeat me my story. Like, oh, I read your book and I saw myself, in, you know, and then I went to uh, a specialist and uh, received a diagnosis. And that, that's the nice part about it. What really was interesting of the, this experience, and I was um, hearing uh, Don saying, yeah, when we, when we were in Brazil, it was one of the first times I could meet uh, many other, that this book gave me the, the possibility to meet a lot of other, other autistics. And that was my you know, revelation. It was an epiphany. And then I met Enrico also. And um, my idea of autism and society and oppression and uh, many other things changed uh, dramatically. So the idea of social model, of neurodiversity, of how can, you know, uh, is it your problem? Uh, is it society? And then the idea of what Enrico was saying, which is something I really think is very interesting, um, a culture, a different culture, culture of autism uh, and ethnography of, of the autism. I mean, these things started really being uh, very interesting to me. Uh, one thing that really was uh, fundamental to me was the association, because when I met them, then I discovered really a, a new way of looking at things and looking at the world. So we became closer and closer. And I think the association was and is today, because now I, I've been elected president, which is a very um, strange thing for me. I mean, um, but uh, the idea is, especially today with social media and if you write, books or whatever you you know you write a blog um sometimes the reality feels a little bit uh far away so for me the association is um, a way to put into practice all the things we say and we write and we study uh like you know with uh, real projects uh, trying to bring our, our ideas into you know onto the, to the ground uh for instance last year they um helped the uh fire um how do you call them the firemen uh in in rome uh they wrote the guidelines for you know assistance for assisting people uh autistic people uh, basically the idea is this I found in the association the 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 way to 
put into practice many things. And, and one of the things uh, that Enrico was uh, was telling about the outcome, which is that non-conference and unconference like uh, on on the bar bar camp model uh which is really interesting uh, that is probably one of the ways we uh can really put um give people the possibility to be together to discuss things to propose things to uh you know just meet and 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 create uh, a different culture. Uh, basically, it's one of those moments we all wait for, uh, like eleven months a year, and it's like, oh. yeah. basically, now it's like in three weeks we will have our uh, uh, outcome, two thousand twenty-three. It's really um, a moment where we can. Uh, discuss and create something different. Um, actually, Enrico also was telling about the book uh, from last uh, last year's outcome. Uh, we we created, he did it actually, uh, a very nice book. So he asked uh, many of us to write something and it, it was such an interesting experience because it, you know, basically he asked something about autism. I don't even remember if you, did specifically ask about tell me something related to autism or your autism your way but I at the end you know right ten pages yeah yeah just that so yeah and and that's the nice thing because we all thought it's going to be about autism but we didn't do it at the end you know it was just about ourselves and there are so many very interesting stories uh, in the book. So yes, the the next one is going to be even uh, uh, nicer, probably. My interest goes always into um, the things that uh, you know, things that catch my my attention usually in my life. So one of my most in problematic areas was work. And also here, I'm not really original. Um, I did work for one year in a company when I was living in Holland, because I was studying in, in, in Amsterdam. I was studying in Harpsichord at the conservatory there. Uh, but then I needed to eat, basically. So I tried to <laughs> uh, uh, one of those very nice call centers. I could resist for I think one year and then I got in, into one of those wonderful burnouts. Uh, so I, I ended up working on my own. Uh, I was I started as a musician, but stage fright, uh, fright was too much. Uh, so I ended up building harpsichords. I did it for like 20 years until my hands uh, gave me problems and, and pain because the work was too, too hard. Uh, and then it's, it's when, when I also received my diagnosis and I thought um, I need to find a job. So my new interest together with the diagnosis and, and autism is autism and work, work workplace inclusion, um, the idea of the... Uh, so I call it like the super autistic, you know, this new, um, uh, uh, incredibly performing uh, uh, genius uh, that, despite being autistic, has a lot of uh, uh, abilities, uh, and it's you know, you know, we are in the neuro inclusion era, so I think it's just the the risk is that we are just making up a new product. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is my latest uh, interest, and I'm, I'm actually my last book was on uh, workplace inclusion and on the dangers of doing it like a uh, business or like um, um, so like I, I oh, how can I call it like a um, yeah, because it's just like a business. By the way, I needed to say that 
I loved this. Really. <laughs> Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, those are wonderful stories, not boring. Uh, I'd like to start the conversation by just reflecting on how astonished I have been as an anthropologist working with other autistic people and seeing how they are with each other. And the whole, like the ridiculousness of this lack of theory of mind thing, because we so get each other, like we get each other. And that has tremendous uh, implications for anthropology itself, because we obviously didn't grow up together. We didn't, we weren't enculturated, right? But we understand each other in these fundamental ways that are that remind me of when I was working with gorillas and there was this unspoken understanding. And I think, I just think the frontiers are boundless. What, what we have to teach the world about culture and how we can help heal each other. Because up until recently, as, as you know, uh, well-meaning people, I think, sort of put us in a divide and conquer situation where we haven't spent a great deal of time with other people that share our way of being. And now that's changing. So it's a very dynamic and exciting time. Uh, if, if either or both of you would care to comment more on what you see the roots of autistic culture being, like what is that essence? And what does it mean? I would love to hear more from you. About uh, anthropology and uh, autism, I am. Uh, I sent you the publisher uh, a kind of reader I wrote that contains uh, your text, uh, Ariel's text, uh, and many others by the fact that the anthropological uh, insight into autism world uh, think at things like uh, uh, orchestrating voices or uh, a lot of other texts uh, about anthropology and autism are absolutely fascinating and they say a lot more than uh, many other discourses in the social sciences about autism. And so I'm not an anthropologist in my introduction. I say I'm not an anthropologist, but uh, I write this book by the fact that nobody else do that. And so I apologize, but, uh, uh, and yes, uh, I think that uh, that is uh, also the book, uh, uh, Elizabeth and the Claris uh, collected uh, is uh, a marvelous book that says a lot of things about uh, autism and the uh, autism, uh, Inside about the culture of autism, I would like to say a few words about uh, the project uh, that follows the uh, Almanac Tups. The title of the first book was Almanac Tups, by the fact that uh, Tups is the acronym for the title of my book uh, that says Tipi Umani, particularmente strani. The next one will be titled uh, the Autism Triad, uh, Ethics, Epistemology, and uh, Activism, by the fact that it points to three levels of the discourse that for me are absolutely uh, interesting. Very little discourse about ethics and autism. Now I know that uh, Ariel did uh, a huge work about the ethics and autism. Also, Autism Europe, a friend of me and Fabrizio is uh, Pietro Cirincione, is the uh, vice president of uh, Autism Europe, that is uh, a very big uh, association of autistic people uh, uh, in Europe. And they also did uh, a huge research on ethics and autism. And uh, the second uh, part is about epistemology, what is autism, why is important to give a sense to the fact that now in the uh, present time autism 
has grown in the public discourse at this level and uh, how it uh, has developed and things like that, a kind of genealogical, epistemological uh, research on uh, the ontology of autism. And uh, the third part, I think that it's also very interesting that is about uh, and is uh, directly connected with the discourse about ethics, that is activism. What means do activism about autism? Uh, there are toxic ways of being activists. There are good ways of creating a common discourse about autism, being an activist, putting your face and things like that. And so, there are many things uh, that could be said about that, uh, but nobody says that But by the fact that activism is on the social networks, but nobody does something like an anthropological research on the emergence of the discourse of activistic, uh, activists and things like that. And I think that is absolutely interesting. And uh, that's all we did. Uh, we this time, the first time was kind of an anarchic uh, asking people to write 10 pages and send it to me. Uh, this time, uh, things are more complicated. We did uh, call for papers, like the real call for papers in the academic world. And uh, the first time was 40 participants. Now we are around 15, 50. And uh, so will be a very big book. And uh, I think that the things that uh, has arrived till now are uh, absolutely marvelous, open a lot of doors to the discourses. Um, a couple of years ago, I was asked to present my research in uh, Bologna at a group of uh, trans-feminist uh, activists. Uh, they knew nothing about neurodiversity, autism, and things like that. Uh, last, uh, the following years, I met them. Almost everyone had a diagnosis, and they are very brilliant. They are also doing their PhD. And a lot of young people is uh, doing very interesting research in these things. We were pioneers, uh, and now things are going on. And uh, I think they are going on in a very interesting way. I, I have a real regular job, and um, it's um, in one of these uh, companies that um, employ autistic people. Yesterday, no, two days ago in Milan, we had a um, selection process. We opened a selection process for new uh, colleagues, and I was in the uh, in the staff for, for the for the recruitment, and it was really impressive. Impressive uh, the knowledge these guys and girls had about autism, and at some point, it really seemed like you know. Uh, repeating my words from a book or Enrico's words from another book. It was like, oh, come on, <laughs> you you must know me. You know, it was like, no, they didn't know me, actually. Uh, and I said, no, we follow this girl, Red. Um, it's somebody, I, Enrico and, and uh, Ariel, we know, we know uh, Red. An activist friend. Of an activist, and she's an activist, but she's an activist on TikTok and, and Instagram. So um, many times uh, this this kind of uh, activism has been criticized for being like, you know, very superficial. Uh, it's just being influencers and not activists. Maybe sometimes, yeah, it's, how do you say, auto-referential, self-referential, whatever. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, sometimes it's like that. But still, we had 15 uh, people uh, age, 25, 35, um, and they all knew everything. And they, their idea, there was even an uh, ABA therapist among them, and I didn't spot her. <laughs> she had to tell me she was, yeah, 
the, the, the discourse and their approach to differences is completely different. Uh, it's more on, you know, just more reciprocity. Let's try to put everybody, to stay everybody on the same uh, level and, and go one toward the other. And this is something that in a very few years happened. But really few years, because when we all started, I mean, I was kind of new when Enrico already uh, was uh, writing a lot of stuff. But I mean, in 2018, when my book came out, um, it wasn't like that. And and now, I mean, so so I think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, curious to see what's going to happen with this kind of culture, because what, what, is, what is happening now, I'm afraid, it's not a culture of autism or autistic culture itself, is a contamination. I mean, we didn't really have time to create our own culture and it's already contaminating uh, the neurotypical uh, culture. So my doubt is that something that was not yet mature is going out too early and maybe the messages may not be really clear or you know but anyway even though it's uh it could be something like that i i was really surprised i just wanted to you know uh tell this story because it was uh like like Enrico said, uh, activism is something that today is, we, we should really um, also look at the ways it changed with time and uh, especially the new, techno new technologies. I mean, I look, I sound like my grandfather, but uh, yeah. But that is a really good point. Uh, the idea that nascent autistic culture as is already being, you know, re rerouted or derailed in some way. I, I'll have to think about that, and and we should cover that in the ethnography at some point as like a specific topic. Um, but what strikes me is that that our culture is not hierarchical, and I think that that's going to serve us in really wonderful ways and keep that derailment to a minimum because i think i think we will stay connected in ways that are unusual among human beings and um to enrico's point really fast uh i love the way that uh you talk about ethics and i think empathy is so clearly needed to be an activist none of us would want to be out there doing this unless it was the right thing to do, it's exhausting. I mean, particularly in the early days, it was exhausting. And so that that just really underscores how much empathy there is um, in autistic people and I think foundational to autistic culture. Ariel did her doctorate in Italy and they met her more than 10 years. No, it was 12 years ago or something like that. Maybe she had something to say about the differences uh, she has found in uh, the perception of uh, autism culture in Italy and in the US. I first went to Italy in 2011, um, and then I spent about a year there in 2012 to 2013, and then I wasn't able to go back until out camp, the non-conference uh, last last fall um, in in. 2022. Um, so I really very deeply um, feel how fast, um, how much has changed. One thing that really struck me when I first went um, to Italy and, and I was analyzing my data, um, neurodiversity wasn't as common a term, but it was very, very rare for anyone to talk about neurodiversity in that language. Um, in Italy at the time. Some people um, like Enrico talked about like emancipation and social models. Um, many people talked about this idea 
that autism was a mismatch between um, like a, the society and the individual and that the society, the pro problems were because the society was not built for autistic people. Um, but only once did I hear someone say, oh, you know, those neurotypicals. Um, Autism Pride was a group, Asperger Pride was a group in Italy that, um, that existed at that time. But as um, Enrico and Fabrizio talked about, NeuroPeculiar um, really started just five years ago in, in 2018. That was after my time. So now um, there, there's a lot more um, like active talk about neurodiversity. Some, uh, we talked a lot about influencers and online personalities. Some people work more in like Italian language. Uh, spaces. Some people work more in English and Italian. Um, I just got Twitter myself in September last year. You know, in terms of differences with the United States, um, one thing that was really important to me when I started was that the just the rate of diagnosis of autism was so, so much lower um, in Italy. And it's still lower than it is in the US. Um, Although the difference is less so, but but still very different. And some people say that means, you know, it's overdiagnosed in the US. And, and as Enrico talked about, who cares about diagnosis sometimes, right? Maybe that doesn't matter. Um, but it was like a good different, a different culture. Um, um, re with respect to diagnosis, a, a diagnosis didn't necessarily get you. Um, very much. Um, we can talk about whether it gets you very much in any of the, the places that, that you are all today. Um, but that was some component as well. Um, can I ask you both a question, Enrico and Fabrizio? Um, one thing that's interesting to me now that I want to learn more about um, is, you know, Fabrizio, you're president of Neuro Peculiar. So you've got the neuro right there in the title. And Enrico, you talk about tupsitude and being just particularly strange humankind's very not neuro. Um, so what are each of your takes or, or what do you hear in Italy about, um, you know, how important is the neuro to neurodiversity? Or is that is neuro maybe not something we want you would like in the culture? I started using the term uh, tubes, uh, but it, it, it's funny enough by the fact that uh, they created a group, uh, a group in, uh, in Facebook, they created a page to talk about my book uh, that is absolutely boring, boring. The only funny thing of the book is the cover, but they started reading it. And uh, by the fact that the title is quite long, that they, they started the, uh, uh, using the acronym was TAPS, uh, and uh, TAPS uh, sounds uh, sounds a good way to to talk about people. And then now a lot of a lot of people, some people uses the term TAPS, uh, and I think uh, I I don't know. You can create words uh, that then they go with their own legs or they disappear. But uh, what's interesting in the term is that it passes over the neuro. Neuro points to something like an etiology. But uh, autism is something more than a neuro. It is something sensorial. It is something at many levels of nonconformity. Uh, and so I think that uh, to find a word that uh, and I, I think that uh, neurodiversity had uh, his fortune by the fact uh, that uh, it uh, appeared in the time of the neuro hype at a lot of uh, other levels, uh, neuro imaging, uh, neuro. Uh, and so it was, uh, they joined together to row uh, one over the other. I think that neuros is little or nothing about autism. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with, uh, to, it has to do with the brain, but uh, it appears in the social situation. So we must find a way to turn autism in face-to-face -face interaction, in, in the ways people behave, and uh, in uh, the ways people feel, and uh, things like that. So I 
prefer not to use neuro, but uh, if people uh, in just use neuro for me, the only important thing is that you understand what uh, you want to say and to, to understand each other. Yeah. Um, about the association, yes, I, I did not uh, choose the name. <laughs> I, I, um, uh, um, I think since, I mean, since the first time I heard the idea of neurodiversity and um, what it meant, so it wants to, you know, take the uh, discourse of autism out of the medical model. Uh, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about social model. Let's mm, focus on on people and 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 differences and on and not on deficits and blah blah blah. And then the idea of okay, right, but then why are we explaining that about uh, with, with the word neuro, uh, neuro, you know, diversity? Um, so I always thought it was a little kind of a limit limitation uh, on the word, but Enrique explained it very well. It was the moment um, in the nineties. Uh, yes, it is a limitation. I mean, I, it, it it limits the 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 discourse, and I like very much the idea of uh, uh, tubes or you know whatever it <laughs> you want to call it. Um, but there is a problem, um, and it's a cultural problem. We are still very uh, uh, bound to the uh, medical model somehow, and to the idea of neuro whatever, uh, especially because of the uh, services uh, you need to prove uh, that you are somehow defective and medically, uh, you know, impaired, <laughs> whatever you want to, you want you want to call it. Um, and actually, we have a lot of problems with parents of um, uh, autistic, uh, especially uh, young autistics. Um, with uh, more need of assistance. Uh, or nonverbal, because and I can understand them, because they need those services, uh, and so they need those certifications in order to get uh, the help they you know they deserve. So there is always this thing. We need to go uh, to move forward, also because you know if you need help, you just need help. You don't need to be autistic. You don't need to be uh, dyslexic or whatever. Um, no, I mean, we should start thinking of uh, new models uh, in our society where people help each other and where, you know, if you if you need some uh, support or, or, or help, whatever is your condition, you just get it. But right now, I understand the, the uh, that we are still uh, into the uh, neuro thing and medical thing because you'd still need a medical certificate to prove that you are autistic and you have some uh, special needs, something I don't really like to say, but uh, that's the situation. So that's one of the things I think we should really uh, focus on. Can I interject really fast? Um, I just have some, this is such a great discussion. I can't get the smile off my face. One of the things that has really struck me with the ethnography is that autistic people just don't even blink if someone says they're self-diagnosed or they've got an official diagnosis. The focus is on can we understand each other and what kind of support do you need in order to thrive? And it's such it's such a beautiful, flexible organic model. And of course, I, I wish that for the um, neurotypical community. I agree. I think everyone could benefit from that. And I, I mean, I could talk about these things forever, uh, but it's only 4.30 in the afternoon where I am. So um, yeah, it's, 
it's a pity actually because it's the i agree that discussion was getting really interesting and then also the people very i mean yeah it is a little bit late and tomorrow morning i have to <laughs> work oh let's think about doing it again in the spring i i would love to have both of you back and um talk talk more about these things and new things that that have emerged um this has just been a fantastic conversation. Do you guys have anything you want to say in closing? In spring, there will be our new book, and we will talk about that. And uh, there is there are a lot of uh, things that I think uh, could be interesting to propose in an ethnography. Thank you so much, Don. Thank you, everyone, Aria, Fabrizio, everyone. Yeah, really. Yes. Thank you. It's been uh, amazing. So I hope to, yes. to keep in touch. I mean, and uh... yeah, thank you to everyone. Ariel, too, back there, and um, Marcia or Marcia. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I, I loved your points as well. Thank you for jumping in, and uh, we'll just be advertising um, the discussions coming up, and certainly. Either one of you are uh, welcome to come back and just participate in whatever we're doing on a weekly basis. We've got people lined up all the way into into early spring, uh, so it's it's going to be an interesting year. So yes, let's all keep in touch. And what a wonderful discussion! Thank you all so much again. Have a great night. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye. Bye.